Dragoon. Man, we do this for the dragon. The American. Dracon means to see clearly. So you can see your future when you keep the code is paradise. Your future when you keep the code is freedom, my nigga. Don't get it twisted. We just talking Dracon. We just talking dragon. I do it for the dragons that see clearly. Hey. We see clearly we may be sidekick, but we ain't no sidekick. And Big Mama, hey, we call her Highness. She ain't no side chick. We might be sidekick. <laughs> You might be psyche, but we ain't no sidekick. <laughs> Let's go, man. Big mama, that's the queen. That's our highness. She ain't no side chick. Hey, big mama. <sighs> Gives us the breath to breathe the fire. <laughs> the fiery nagas. Male or female. This naga is a dragon. This naga is an American. I do it for the Americans because I'm an American and it's okay to do it for my tribe, for my people. But we are a dragon and we do see clearly. And you want to ride the wave, ride the wave. but you gotta control your frequency to be the way. Nah, man. You can use the wave, but don't misuse the wave. We can use each other without misusing each other. That's when we see clearly, because we might be sidekick, but we ain't no sidekick. Big mama, that's our highness. She ain't no side chick. Hey, the water talking about Nagas surfing the wave. What do y'all think, man? This is the question. I just wanted to drop in on my Nagas to get some clarity to this question and surf the wave. And I don't have the answers. We don't have all the answers to all these questions, but it's really great that we ask the questions. But when we do, we got to check our intentions. You know, why are we asking this question? What are we trying to manipulate? Do we got pure water in the heart bones? A question keeps, uh, you know, coming up in my comments that I just wanted to address about Khan Dawi. We've been searching for Preston John. 101 installments of the Preston John investigation live in full effect for any of my noggers to dig on in real time, anytime. <laughs> you can surf the wave, advertisement free, <laughs> no monetizations or any of that stuff, all completely for my noggers to enjoy the vibration. And I'm proud of that, you know, that we could provide that, you know what I'm saying? As a tribe, tribe, as drop nation. They say is uh, King David. Is Khan Dawi. I mean, I'm just talking about the copper color Nagas found here. Is Khan Dawi going to return? Is Khan Dawi going to rise again? Or should we just be looking for a righteous branch? Because surely we could read script talking about a right, a righteous shoot, a righteous branch. And we could read script, you know, breaking down one shepherd forever, David, one shepherd. And based on your intentions, you know, you can see that in different perspectives, you know, or you can just search it out. 
Will David come back reincarnated? <laughs> um, or did David ever leave? You know, someone asked. Should we be looking for David or the offspring of David? You know, the righteous branch. And I replied, David never left because the family youth is not a myth. We got to question everything as we investigate. And it's okay to ask these questions. You know, we're we talking about a reincarnation situation. And what if we were, you know, has that happened? Is that uh, spoken of in the script? We're going to talk about some script. We're going to get to it. We're just putting the questions on the tape. Should we be looking for a righteous branch of David or Kandawi himself? Hey, you know, should we be, uh, you know, checking in for the Aquas, you know, Lady Davida. Hey, shout out to all my Davidas and shout out to all my Davids or Dawids or Dodi. <laughs> Dodi. It's a beautiful flow, man, and it's a beautiful thing. So, again, check your intentions, you know what I'm saying? Um, on one side of the, of the flow, you know, it's not about worshiping a man or, you know, waiting for a man to return to save you. Because Hawaii says very clearly in Isaiah 43, I, only I, am your Savior. So none of the Preston investigation or none of the search for David has ever been about replacing the creator with David as the Savior, ever. You can get that, you know what I'm saying, from Preston 1 all the way to one on one, my naga. That when we when we read Hosea three, we talk about this adulteress and this harlotry going on after other gods. Never have we uh, referred to David as God or going after the God David. You know what I'm saying or nothing like that. None of that blasphemy over here, man. It's been very clear from day one. Israel returns, seeks Hawa directly which makes you what? M-H-O-E. You got most high over everything, boss. Most high over everything. So, you know, David does not replace most high over everything. Israel returns, you seek the creator, period. And once you're in order with the code, you K-T-C, you M-H-O-E, most high over everything. You K-T-C, you keeping the code, that that's when we start talking david you know what i'm saying after we're in code seeking the creator directly Ka, i'm doing this for clarity because i don't know if people be trying to you know you know throw these uh interference patterns you know try to confuse things but we you know we always gotta speak clarity because hawa ain't all no confusion man so on one side, you got, okay, we don't want to make sure you've fallen into worshiping a man or thinking a man is your savior. Anyone the creator sends is a messenger or a high Mashiach or a Hakan or a Hamashiach sent by the only savior, Hawa. Ka? Ka, ka. So they can't twist our words. We're just making it real clear especially for the new wave servers. I mean, these are good questions, you know what I mean? So, you know, on the other side, all right, you, you got this righteous branch, you know, type of uh, narrative. And this righteous branch narrative leads right into JC and Christianity, and he's the king and the righteous branch sent later. We asked the... $64 million question time and time again over here in this classroom. We say, uh, how can uh, Jesus, JC, right, their Christ, how can Christ, their Christ, be a seed of David or included in this prophecy of this branch of David when he himself, JC, is an immaculate conception? Immaculate conception means you have no father, right? You're, you're, you're just immaculately 
born from this virgin mother. Same thing with like Horus, right? And the Egyptian flow and many others, right? <laughs> so this immaculate conception idea and concept is not brand new to Christianity. It's a phantom and duplication of what they're really rocking with, this Egypt Atlantean flow, sun god flow, right? So, you know, um, if your intention in seeking a righteous branch is to connect to the New Testament, and, <laughs> you know, pretty much something that has reversed our flow from going direct to the creator and now you got to go indirect through a sun god if your intention is to go to a sun god you know you got to check it you got to find it and you got to dismantle that hijack and dodge your own hijacks if you read righteous branch or righteous shoe think of a Think of the tribe as a whole, you know what I'm saying? Think of the righteous branch as a whole. And if there's a con coming out, you know, like many have, you know, sat on this throne after David, Solomon, and, you know, many kings after that. So exilarchs are coming after that. Yes, Hawa has promised that a seed of David, a righteous branch, <laughs> will always have the scepter. Now, does that mean that David Khan, David himself, would not be able to reclaim his own scepter? Does that mean that those kings that are being raised up or the queens that's being raised up like Tamar, defending the territory, protecting the families during this, you know, tribulation that they're overcoming, this captivity, Babylonian, Persian, what all this stuff is going on. You know, we always had a righteous branch, man. The remnant has always been here. So when you're reading righteous branch, it's nothing new. These are exilarchs. This is the remnant that Hawaii has promised. And if a con is coming out of that, that's Yapa. I mean, that's beautiful. That's that's all, you know, to the Tawa. But don't have an intention to try to replace David with a seed of David just because you got something against David. Because <laughs> David ain't went nowhere. Why does David need to be replaced so bad? So I'm just giving you two sides of the perspective. Two extreme sides. On one extreme, they say, oh, you, you just talking David, David, David. Y'all just want to worship a man called David. <laughs> Nah, that's extreme. We seek the creator directly. We keep the code before we even started talking David. <laughs> we became interested in Dawi together. We got on this investigation together. We got the Presta one-on-one together. We didn't know that this Presta popped off the Crusades and popped off, you know, really the last stand for the Nagas all the way up to the 1800s. So we could have a philosophy about this energy, about this Melchizedek flow. It's not just a man you talking when you talk Dawi, you know, when David's being anointed, Khan, when you seeking the creator and, da and David, this is not just a man thing. This is a frequency thing. This is a Melchizedek thing. It's possible, we don't know, but it's possible that the same frequency, you know, that was within this Melchizedek that got Abraham in order, where he popped off his circumcision and everything after that. So he's 99 years old getting that particular flow. You know, is this the same Ruach, the same frequency that's, you know, connected with David? Young David being anointed Khan. And is that the same frequency being referred to as a righteous branch and righteous shoot? You know what I'm saying? Is it a frequency flow? Not so much a reincarnation flow, but that the frequency is always here. The frequency that is within David, not just 
David himself as a man, but the frequency that Hawa calls in Psalms 89, my firstborn. Is this the same frequency all the way back to Adam? It's not just man to man, it's frequency, it's flow, it's ruach. You got to factor in it all. So let's take a journey. Let's take a journey, my noggin. You know, we just returning, <laughs> seeking the creator, searching for David, following the order. So when you come over here, just know that it's about vibration, it's about frequency, it's about order. We're not on one extreme. You know, trying to worship no man as our savior. We know we got one savior and that's Hawa. And that's why we seek Hawa first and foremost. And we're told to continue our investigation so we can connect to the water, to the presta that got the water, the fountain of youth, my life. Ezekiel 37, one shepherd. One shepherd. Let's take a journey. <laughs> Back to Malachi 4. So what's so, you know, let's 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 ride this way before we get to the righteous branch side of the equation. And again, whether it's David himself or a Davida herself or a righteous branch of either Davida or David themselves, as long as Hawaii sends us a Mashiach, that is. Baruch, it is Baruch to be sent a messenger to lead you to the water on behalf of the creator. You know what I mean? It's all one flow, whether it's in this vessel or that vessel or that vessel. So, you know, I don't have a, you know, a, uh, <laughs> a race car in the race, you know what I'm saying? Whether, oh, this is King David or this, or this is David, like, we don't know. You know what I'm saying? We can't try to be so um, unmoldable, unframable, unshakable. We came here to learn, man. But on the real, what I ain't going to do <laughs> is, you know, go back and forth with, you know, anybody that just wants to argue back and forth different, their perspectives. That's cool. You know, leave your comments. But, you know, if you just come just for, just to instigate, you know what I'm saying? Well, I think this and I think that. Hey, man, you can exit through the back door. You ain't here to surf the wave of possibilities. We didn't anchor on nothing. Only a while, only the code. As far as the theories, we haven't anchored on anything. We don't press the one-on-one. -on -one. Still got a bunch of questions. Is David Moshe? That's a little more evidence even in the Qumran scrolls that we got pulled up over here, but that's another question. <laughs> so that David Moses connection is a whole nother flow. So let's look at this uh, Malachi 4 and again. Does the script talk about anybody returning? Let's just take it from there before we get spooked out about David personally returning or being sent, even though you know, he is said to have died. <laughs> you know, uh, did he actually die? Um, or is he being brought back like like Moshe, whose eyes were never dim? His eyes were never dim, Deuteronomy 34, verse 7. And Moshe was 120 years old when he died. His eyes, his eye was not dim nor his natural force abated. My naga, what does it mean? What does it mean? <laughs> For his eyes to never be dim or his natural force to not be abated? Hey, it's a marvel, right? Press the John in the marvel, right? <laughs> so... Impressed to John and the Marvel after the Crusades. I told you it's all about the Crusades when it comes to the press. John traveled the world until he found the island of Avalon. 
there he gained the evil eye, right? So this evil eye is some type of technology. It's not some evil thing. Some type of technology. The device actually split into six pieces. Hold up, man. All this hijack. Hijack city. Hold up. The evil eye is made of an unknown metal. Okay, so we're talking a we're talking technology, a device, right? Capable of manipulating matter in at a molecular level, firing concussive force blasts, disintegrating matter, nullifying other energy sources, and creating or destroying force fields. So this evil eye is able to create a force field of protection. Why is it called the evil eye? The evil eye possesses dimensional time travel abilities. Why is it called an evil eye? You could travel through time. You can create or destroy a force field. <laughs> it had a safety button that charged it, but if the button was left off, the power would rapidly rise to dangerous levels. Causing it to explode the evil eye or the evil or the eye will be broken into six similar bits when it exploded. And they would be pushed through the earth until they met sunlight again. But Preston John had the evil eye, right? The device actually split into six pieces and spread throughout the globe, becoming a focal point of the Avenger Defender War. Later, Preston John carried a new version of the evil eye called the Stellar Rod. All right, so the evil eye is a device. <laughs> now it says, as the plague seemed to wipe, let's get it over here. As the plague seemed to wipe out the, civ the citizens of Avalon, John prepared to sit upon the seat of survival, which would place him in. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Suspended animation. Then he has some fight with Kong, which it sounds like Genghis Khan, right? And then he's, you know, fighting these Muslims, man, right? <laughs> President John battled Muslim warriors, right? Because he's fighting the Moors, right? It's a more and more war. And he got the evil eye. <laughs> You got this suspended animation time traveling device. I'm just saying, just could be something, could be nothing. Keep the evil eye and <laughs> keep the suspended animation in mind. And Moses was 120 years old when he died. His eye was not dim, nor his natural force abated. That means lessened or loss he didn't lose no natural force and he didn't lose no life man was he in suspended animation my not his eye <laughs> was not dim his natural force was never lessened was he in suspended animation we're just talking marvels though let's go back my point is, <laughs> Moses was left in suspended animation. His eye was never dim. His life force was never abated. And now let's look at Elijah. I'm just saying, when we say David is returning, don't sound like this is crazy and spooky. <laughs> What's going on with Elijah? And you know, a while I got this covenant with David. Just, just keep this covenant in mind. Psalms 89, I will sing of the mercies of Hawah forever. To all generations will I make known your faithfulness with my mouth. For I have said, forever is mercy built. That means Hawah is always going to have mercy on the house of David and specifically Dawi. In the very heavens, thou does establish your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen. 
I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn into David, my servant. So before you jump over David to the righteous branch, which is what some people's intention is. And I don't know when we read this righteous branch translation, if it was added later by this Christian insurgents and inserting their philosophies into our Tanakh. Khan Khan, you know, it is about the tribe waking up and coming back and returning, right? Hosea 3. It is about that. The tribe got to return. Israel got to return. So the covenant with David is not separate than the covenant with Israel. But it's a fact that you got to see Kawa most high over everything. You can't put no power before your power. Then you can talk surfing away with David as a con and having some nobility because you went a long time without no nobility. Israel shall sit solitary many days without a con. No prince, no king, no nothing. You don't know what a royal is. You don't know what this press to flow really is. But the question of the hour is, is David returning? personally or are we just talking offspring and righteous branches did did Hawa make a covenant with david so that david will never return was it just for the offspring or does Hawa love david personal so you can't separate the personal ahab and The true connection that the creator has with David personally is more than just a flesh and bone thing. It's a Ruach flow. So whether David in the exact same flesh and bones, or we're talking reincarnation, or we're just talking the Ruach will continue. Either way, as long as Hawa gets us up out of captivity into freedom and Shalawam, you know, I mean, that's all. That's everything and more to Anaka. So yeah, as long as Hawa sent the message. But what, what will be the message, you know? <laughs> what will be the message? You know, look like the press is carrying a message. You know, he's carrying this code. He got a big book of the law. If the Preston's message is not to code up and to keep the code, then he ain't no Preston. It's very simple. If the Preston's only message is, hey, follow me, follow me. <laughs> I got the power. I got the power. I got all the power. That ain't no Preston. I mean, I'm just referring to the new Preston in town. Matthew 28. Uh-oh. <laughs> hey, just for kicks. But remember, we might be sidekick, but we ain't no sidekick. The covenants with the children of Israel, we ain't no sidekick, but we can see clearly we might be sidekick. Come. And Jesus <laughs> came and spoke unto them saying, all power is given unto me. That ain't no Preston, my nigga. That ain't no Preston. You know what I'm saying? A Preston don't come talking about all power's been given to me. A Preston comes and make sure you got the code. Make sure you got the commandments of the creator. I'm just talking Khan Dawi. Now we know the covenant is with the Khan. This is why we search. This is why we seek in Hosea 3. After we done sat many days without a Khan, this is why we're seeking to get back in code. 
And then you can get the keys, man, that Hawa intends to share with you the secrets of creation, my nine. But you don't get that out of code. You got to return and seek the creator directly. This covenant. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David, my servant. Sure, it includes the establishment of the seed, but the covenant had to be sworn into David. You don't skip that to a righteous branch and act like David got to be out the picture. And this is my point with this righteous branch conversation. When people think we popping off too much, searching for David, they say, well, shouldn't we be searching for the righteous branch? Oh, okay, so you want to go you know, put out some type of star search, man. You, you want to put out some application in every city near you? Hey, do we got any righteous branches? How do you go about finding the righteous branch of how, how do you go about <laughs> this wild goose chase? Do you think the creator intends on us to go on a wild goose chase to search for the righteous branch of David in the end of day? Would that not distract us from keeping the code? Well, we going crazy from city to city, <laughs> searching for the righteous branch. The creator don't deal in chaos. The creator don't deal in confusion. If it's all about a branch of the tree and not the root itself, then I'm sure that branch <laughs> will shine mighty bright. You won't have to go looking for that branch. <laughs> and it would be uh, extremely clear for all Nagas to see. But until that day, <laughs> when you search for Dawi, you're searching for your nobility. You're searching for the frequency, that Ruach, that Melchizedek, day, that code that is written on your heart bone. Forever will I establish your seed. Khan. <laughs> Khan, you know why? Because this is the seed that has returned. And started seeking the creator directly. This covenant is brought to life when you're back in code. And this forever is because the creator already knows you're going to choose up. So you are already established. We are built up. The throne is built up to all generations. So you don't have to throw David into the, into the back wind to make room for a righteous branch. It's all one thing. It's all happening. Why can't you return and David return? Why does it have to be this or that? Here is where we doubt the intentions of those coming with this righteous branch conversation. As if the branch has to replace the root. When we talk the root of Jesse, <laughs> we're talking the kingdom of Dawi forever established. That includes all righteous branches <laughs> of the tree. But the branch don't replace the root and don't act like it's crazy for the root to return. If you got Elijah return, but now we're talking the tish bite and ain't it the tish bite, nothing but a wanderer. And who is Elijah? Could the frequency that Elijah is rocking in be the same as the frequency of the anointed Kanda? We, well, could the frequency of the anointed Kanda we be the same as the Frequency of the anointed Moshe. Could the frequency of the anointed Moshe be the frequency of the Melchizedek? Huh? So whatever righteous branch you're talking in the future must be in the exact same signature and frequency. Energy. As the pure water seed of David, of Jesse, of Isaac, of Abraham, back to Adam. This is a vibe thing. This is a vibration. 
you could separate it into this man, that man, that man, that man. But there's a flow that connects us to them, us to our ancestors. An apple seed still has the frequency of the apple tree that bore the seed and such forth and such forth, man. So the frequency of, okay, I'm going to take this apple and plant this seed that's still coming from the frequency of the mother tree, unless it's been dissected, <laughs> unless it's been genetically modified, huh? And that's what they're trying to do is genetically modify us by dropping these innuendos like righteous branch so that they can genetically modify us into JC. And JC come in and say, hey, well, I've been modified. All power has been given to me. In heaven and earth. That's funny because based on this $1,000 book, Medieval Empire of the Israelites, talking about the Holy Grail, the Holy Bloodline that they want to connect to that JC. Before JC's hijacking the bloodline, the grail, the grail already belongs to Dawi, which is proven in the script. Ezekiel 37, one shepherd forever. Search for Hawaii and Dawi. Hosea 3. <laughs> this bloodline, this covenant, is already. In effect, you want us to forget about the Presta. You want us to forget about David to make room for a new, a new hero. <laughs> a love to the Templar, a new romance. You want a new love story. Someone that comes and says, all power's been given to me, but you can't have all power, JC. Because the symbol of the grail is a symbol of authority. You can't have all power because you're not the grail. Part and parcel of the legend of Preston John, when we talk the grail, the holy bloodline, which is this David righteous branch scenario that they're bringing up because it's all the same thing. And this is why we got the Preston one-on-one. And this is how we can connect what they were looking for, obviously, throughout these crusades, looking for the Garden of Eden, looking for the promised land, looking for the so-called black man, Ethiopian, Abyssinian, Rex Negus, right here in the superior India, Asia Major, where it's major lasers, Eleazar's popping off. But right now, I'm just talking Elijah. These are titles. Elijah is El Hawa. Elijah is El Hawa. El Hawa. But who is Elijah? Who's El Hawa? Did it tell us in the script who Elijah is? Man? Or did Elijah just pop up out of absolutely nowhere and start checking Ahab? <laughs> so. Before uh, JC can claim all power and authority, John already has the authority. John means king. We're talking priest, king, Preston, John. John was the master of a huge empire. He is omnipotent and all powerful. Whoa. Because I thought JC said, all power's been given to me. In heaven and earth. What timeline is this on again? Because by the time you put our thousand years back, man, you back in the 1100s, and that's when the Preston John letter is being written. 1165, they say. Maybe even 30, 40 years earlier than that. So there's no room for you, JC, to be taking on this power. And what Preston is going to pop on the scene saying, all power has been given to me. But you're supposed to be a son of Dawi. So you a son of Dawi, but you got all the power of Dawi as if Dawi is 
absolutely nullified, eradicated. You got to get David out the way, don't you, JC? So you can get all power unto me. In heaven and earth? That's funny because so does the press to have all this power. He is all powerful. We're just talking press to John. But now if I'm talking David, I'm talking priest, king. This king is holding the law. He is a priest king. He's holding the code. Yeah, he is a marvel, right? <laughs> We're talking the kind of cons, always with the book in his hand. They got him, right? Who is Presta John, man? Who is Presta Juan? I mean, look at his garments. Look at his garments. Look at his shoes. <laughs> look at his shoes. Press the one, press the John is a naga. Con David is a naga. Naga? Naga? <laughs> naga. They don't want you to know. Because I'm just talking copper color races found here by the European. So we're talking the Khan. <laughs> Khan means priest. Holding the book. Who, oh, who is Preston John? So, you know, I'm just clarifying this. This is more of a clarification session. And, uh, you know, let's let's talk about it, man. So here comes Elijah. Let's go. Again, you can't be spooked out about David coming back and act like, well, y'all going off because y'all think David going to be reincarnated. That's crazy. Let's go back to Elijah. Who's Elijah? Because, you know, not a lot of people really talking about Elijah. Go get the drop. You know, we had a whole presser drop about Elijah. I think we had a few. Just go get the drop. You know, it's all on the playlist. Click the link below. <clears throat> Let's get it, man. Clear my throat. Drink my cup of water for the cup of knock. Found here by the European. Not brought here on boats. Wow. Let's get it. Because now they took your titles. Now it's applied to their descendants. But they want to act like the future Prester is just a descendant of David. David can't come back. Wait, everybody can come back, but David, like JC, he coming back, no problem. Christians got a whole religion about JC return. We say David is being raised up, right? What does Jeremiah say? Jeremiah 30, verse 9. Start at verse 7. Alas, for that day is great. What day? We're talking about Jacob's trouble. So that none is like it, and, and it is a time of trouble unto Jacob. Right? We're talking about Israel returning, Hosea 3. But out of it shall he be saved. Why? Because someone else came, or the creator, most high, is saving us out of captivity. And it shall come to pass in that day, says Hawa, that I will break his yoke from off your neck. Don't that sound good, my knock? Get out that slave frequency. You ain't got to work for nobody. Deal with their currency. Break his yoke from off your neck. You will burst your bands. You are a free nigga. Free the man, <laughs> my take the wheel, and strangers shall no more make him their slaves. Don't that sound good, my knock? But they shall serve Hawa, their power. And David their king. Jeremiah 30. 
Now, then you go to 33 and it talks about uh, this branch of David and righteous branch. And 23 talks about this righteous branch. But this ain't talking about no branch. It's talking about Dawi. Is that crazy? To talk Preston. Let's weigh it out. Whom I will raise up unto them. Whom I will raise up unto them. We're just talking about a righteous branch. What's a righteous branch without the root? A walk can only raise up a branch now, not the root. But before that, God is raising up Jesus forever. Jesus going to come. The whole rapture. Save everybody because Jesus is coming. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hey. But we say David is being raised up. Like they're doing with Jesus as a reflection and duplication. Yosef, take the wig. Ninth spiral, let's cook. <laughs> hey, up to the cons. Come on, man. Hold up. JC is all good to be raised. He can raise up in three days. The creator is powerful. He can raise the dead. Got it. But now the creator ain't powerful. Can't raise the dead. <laughs> David died. Okay, so that frequency can't get raised again. Whether you're talking reincarnation. Or whether you're talking Dawi, <laughs> just like Moshe, whose body, whose, whose life force, natural force was not abated, nor was his natural force abated. There was no lessening in his natural force, man. His eye was not dim. <laughs> he kept his natural force are we just talking suspended animation does John prepare to sit on the seat of survival <laughs> which would place him in suspended animation whoa let's go back we're just talking Jeremiah But they shall serve Hawa their power and David their king. Hawa is not the author of confusion. What happens is that they get you to start doubting the creator and doubt that as much as Hawa loves David, as much as the covenant is sworn unto David, Psalms 89, that David can't be brought back by the creator they want you to suddenly start doubting Hawaii but the Christians believe more in their God raising Jesus than a Hebrew can believe in their power raising David is that what you're going to give these <laughs> is that is that the faith you're going to give these hijacks over you they believe more in their power being able to raise up their prophet or their savior then you believe in Hawa being able to raise up your Mashiach whom I will raise up unto them it has to be a righteous branch we know the seed we know it's for the seed but you can't forget about the root or doubt that the creator can raise the root with the branches <laughs> with the sea go back let's go malachi 4 verse 22 remember you the law of moses my servant and shalak and um other translations this would be malachi i don't know why they do it like this but that's in in the tanakh it'll be malachi 4 verse 5 Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Hawaii. All right, all right. Let's meditate on this. Let's meditate. Let's get it together, my Nagala. Get it together, y'all. Let's go.
<laughs> so Elijah is being raised up just like David. Makes you ask the question, who's Elijah? Who's this Preston priest con coming out, commanding fireballs from the sky, <laughs> and then going and leaving in a world where he came from nowhere, he went, he, he disappeared into nothing. <laughs> so who is Elijah? I don't see no major genealogy you know that really sticks on elijah but he's first mentioned in what first king you know what i'm saying so remember you the law of moses my servant right keep the code which i commanded him in horeb for all israel with the statutes and judgments keep the code keep my commandments Verse 5, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Hawa. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So either they change or they're going to get cursed. <laughs> Ping pow, end the prophets don't sound like Hawa can't bring no one back when Elijah is supposed to be coming back. But who's Elijah? This is Tanakh. <laughs> Tanakh only session. So before we get spooked out about David returning Jeremiah 30 style, right? Jeremiah 30, you shall serve the creator and David whom I will raise up unto them this is out the Tanakh 1917 okay I'm just you know I'm not just taking one one translation or one thing to create no narrative I'm just <laughs> reading out this Tanakh comparing it cross referencing you know what I mean and of course man we're talking precepts because we're bringing it all together whether we're going to Malachi whether we're going to uh, Hosea 3. Afterwards shall the children of Israel return and seek Hawa their power and David, their God, and shall come trembling unto Hawa and his goodness in the end of days. Last days, latter days, end of days, something is happening in the future. Something is happening in the future that hasn't happened yet because I haven't seen all of Israel return and keep the code. I mean, we're beginning. We're in the beginning stages. The search for the press is now becoming more popularized, but no one was talking about it. Now look how many people talking press to John. That's because of you drop nation. And they all know that. Allow Hawa for giving us the message to spread. It's not our message. It's Hawa. Because you return. Seek Hawa and David again. But they shall serve Hawa their power and David their king whom I will raise up unto them. It doesn't just have to be a righteous branch scenario. We can, we can literally be talking, David, if we're literally talking Elijah, the prophet, and we connected these frequencies, this David flow and this Elijah flow in previous drops. You do your recon, you can get that drop. Click the link below. So behold, I will send you Elijah, the prophet, before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Hawa. That's the end of days, right? The same end of days <laughs> that you children of Israel are returning, seeking the creator, your power, 
and David, you're kind. Trembling to Hawaiian's goodness in the end of days. In the same end of days. Same great and dreadful day of Hawaii, end of days. You are receiving Elijah the prophet. <laughs> the same time you're supposed to be seeking Hawaii and David in the end of days, right? So what's the correlation between Elijah the prophet and Dawi and the flow, the press to flow, the press to flow, who was all powerful. Kings and czars were for him only subjects. Tracticus Polkermus calls John the king of kings. No room for no JC. All power has been given to me. You know why he said that? Because he didn't have no power. He over there making water to wine. <laughs> the real Joshua is parting the Jordan, man. The real Joshua is making the sun stand still and the moon stand still. He over there walking on water. The real Joshua is making the waterfall cease in their tracks, keeping the water up so the tribe can cross on dry land, doing it for the tribe, the real Joshua, who Moses touched, right? All powerful. Moses laid hands on the real Joshua, right? Not the duplicate who sang all power has been given to me. We saw Joshua get the power but Moses laid his hands on him in Deuteronomy. Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the Ruah, of wisdom, Ama, big mama, just like David. Just like David had the wisdom, right? And Moses had laid his hands upon him. That's why Joshua, son of Nun, had the spirit, power, all powerful. We ain't talking this fake ass power. I'm the son of God. All power's been given to me. So go teach all the nations, baptize them in what? Does he have the fountain of youth? Does he got the water? Preston John combines in himself spiritual and secular authority. And he can say about himself, Preston John, by Hawaii's grace, Lord of all lords who are only beneath the heaven. Beneath heaven from the rising of the sun to paradise on earth. They say the sun, right? Raises in the, rises in the east. So the rising of the sun must be opposite to the setting of the sun. Where? In paradise. In the so-called west. Preston John controls and holds back the tribes of Gog and Magog, and Preston John controls the seen and unseen worlds. He sees clearly. <laughs> Preston John controls the seen and unseen worlds. John's kingdom is named the Empire of the Great Khan. Anybody want to get there? You know, rulership, legitimized, legitimate, legitimization of their status as rulers had to visit the kingdom of the Prester. Talking to Khan father, <laughs> which they changed to Vatican from Bati, which means house, house of the Khan. They hijacked the house of the Khan. This is what we see clearly. They had to come to the house of the Khan to be legit as a ruler for status. I'm just talking Preston John, who is all powerful because the covenant is with David. All power has been given to me, hijack city. You're the wrong Joshua. Does the real Joshua? I said the real Joshua. Joshua, son of Nun, or Quetzalcoatl, <laughs> as it says in the book of the beginnings, love to Paku, Joshua is compared to Quetzalcoatl, 
and Moses is compared to Hawama, the book of the beginnings. So if Joshua is the Mayan priest king, Kitzakwal, who is who the Mormons call their Christ, <laughs> and that separates them from your modern regular Christian because they factor in the indigenous truth, the priesthood, the priest con Joshua into their flow. <laughs> and we connect it all with the same frequency, the same frequency that Joshua got full of spirit, wisdom. We're just talking wisdom. Mama, after Moses laid his hands on him, that was also passed to Moshe, right? That was also passed to Dawi. David had the same wisdom, same mama. David and Moses got the same mama. So Joshua also got the same mama. Let's go. Let's go. We're heating up. So Elijah, the prophet, is coming before the great and dreadful day. Check. So it's not weird for a prophet to return. So how can it be weird for David who has the covenant to return? Who it clearly says in Jeremiah 3, who I will raise up unto them. And clearly says in Hosea 3 that Israel going to return in the end of days, seeking the creator, getting back in cold, and connecting with David, their king again. They want to turn into a righteous branch so that JC could pop off and say, all oh, power's been given to me, Yahawashah. We ain't got no room for you, Yahawashah. You turning water to wine. You too busy turning water to wine. Joshua's son of Nun got, his, got the hands of Moses laid on him to get that Ruah. Then he started parting the Jordan, having the tribe cross on dry ground, holding the waters back, holding the sun still, holding the moon still. That's a higher level magi than your JC all power been given to me, turning water to wine, walking on water. Oh, you, you was raised in three days. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Who's Elijah? Who's this prophet that's supposed to be coming in the end of day? First Kings chapter 16, right? Let's get it. Verse 29, let's just pick it up from here. And I want to bring you into the first occurrence, the very first occurrence of Elijah. And I want to ask a simple question to the wave servers on wave surfers on where did Elijah come from? Who's Elijah? Let's go. Verse 29, first King 16. And in the 38th year of Asa, king of Judah, began Ahab the son of Omri to reign over Israel. Now his name is Ahab, but he was not about that Ahab. I mean, Ahab, the son of Omri reigned over Israel in Samaria 22 years. And Ahab, the son of Omri did that which was evil in the sight of Hawa. So he was not giving Hawa Ahab, but he's named Ahab. And it, was, and it came to pass as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nabat, that he took to wife Jezebel, oh, daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Zidonians, and went and he served Baal, and he worshipped him. And he reared up an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he built in Samaria. And Ahab made the Asherah. And Ahab did yet more to provoke Hawa, the power of Israel, than all the kings of Israel that were before. So this is how bad it got, right? This was when Elijah came. 
when Elijah pop up, it's because it has reached rock bottom for Israel. You know what I mean? It was the worst it had ever been. So first you say, why did Elijah come? Then you say, where did he come from? Then you might even say, who <laughs> is Elijah? Let's go. So you see how bad it was, all right? He did more to provoke Hawa with evil than all the kings of Israel that were before him. In his days, verse 34, did Hiel the Bethelite build Jericho with Abarim, Abaram, his firstborn, he laid the foundations thereof, and with his youngest son, Segub, he set up the gates. According to the word of Hawa, which he spoke by the hand of Joshua, the son of Nun. Yeah, the real Joshua. So what happens next? And Elijah the Tishbite. <laughs> so Elijah comes out of nowhere. All right, we, you can go back and get more context if you want. It's not going to bring you any closer to where did Elijah just pop up in. All we know is that it was the worst it's ever been. Here comes Elijah, the what? The Tishbite. And you say, what is a Tishbite? Remember, Tishbite is what they call a demon name. Whoa. As a word, it's a demon name, a demon name or a gentilic. G-E-N-T-I-L-I-C is a word that identifies a group of people in relation to a particular place. Demonyms, <laughs> crazy word, right? Are usually derived from the name of the place. Demonyms are used to designate all people of a particular place, regardless of ethnic, linguistic, religious, or cultural connection, man. So look, it's a demonym, which means he's being called a tish by just because he's being related to an area that doesn't have anything to do with a designation of ethnicity or linguistic or religious or any cultural, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So <laughs> basically, if you say you're a Chicagoan, that's a demon in because you know, you don't, you know, you could be black, you could be white, you know, so called, you know, Christian, Muslim, like, <clears throat> you know, if if I'm a uh, Los Angeles, you know, I'm just saying that I'm from LA. That doesn't really say anything about me. So for them to introduce Elijah as a Tishbite, it gives us nothing about who Elijah really is. It just connects Elijah to what they call Tishbi. Tishbi. <laughs> so. You know, this Tish B is supposed to be connected with the city of Galilee or Gilead. You know what I mean? So all you could really say as they're rendering here in Wiki <laughs> is that he that first King 17 1 could be rendered. Listen up. Quote, Elijah the dweller, right? Before they just said the Tish by. The Tishbite just means he's dwelling in this area. So we couldn't answer where he came from. He just popped in 1 Kings 17. We can't even answer who he is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because it just says he's a dweller. We have no lineage on him whatsoever. He's dwelling among the inhabitants of Gilead. Gilead. Alternatively, the words of 1 Kings 17.1 could be rendered, quote, Elijah the dweller from among the inhabitants of Gilead. Because in that verse, Tishbite, and the word denoting inhabitants are very similar. Tishbite, inhabitants, same thing. Strong's concordance states, the word denotes a dweller, especially as distinguished from a native resident, but not an outlandish dweller. 
Whoa. So it's distinguished from a native resident. So again, this tells us nothing <laughs> about where he's coming from. He's dwelling, but he's not necessarily native to Gilead. So you could say I'm a Chicago man, but that doesn't mean that you were born in Chicago. Maybe you are dwelling in Chicago, which is what's making this word a demon. It doesn't specifically denote, you know what I mean? ethnic or linguistic or religious or other cultural differences you, you can't see no differences culturally in a demon word that identifies a group of people inhabitants residents natives in relation to a particular place but it might not be a native you could just be a inhabitant you know there's a difference between a native and an inhabitant right <laughs> america 1828, a native of America, right? Now you're talking natural by law, love to the car, love to the family of natural by law, man, sprouting out, man, the seed is sprouting, a halal wa, and Max Baruch to the house of natural by law. Also, Max Baruch to the house of nine spiral. May your ama continue to be filled with Hawa's frequency of renewal, replenishing, pure water, you know. I mean, I'm talking primary mem. Let that primary mem flow through your ama. All prayers up to my ak, not spiral. And it's ama, halawa. So, you know, hawa got us, you know what I mean? We're talking the con, copper color cons found here now applied to the descendants now these europeans born in america can be inhabitants or descendants <laughs> but they might not be native a descendant can be an inhabitant but a descendant can never be a native a descendant can never be natural by law to america but because they are inhabiting america they now get the title of American descendants of the Europeans that found us here. Who? The copper color tribe. Got it, boss. So behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Hawa, Malachi 4, verse 5. He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers. Let's I just come curse everything. They can't get it together. Elijah comes. The Tishbite. Here comes Elijah. Now, whether this is Elijah coming, you know, after Malachi or before Malachi, but if Malachi is the last book, <laughs> ain't Malachi the last book, right? Before Matthew, before it comes this new, this new uh, whimsical wannabe priest, wannabe con saying all power has been given to me in heaven and earth when there's already an all powerful con, Rex Negus who has the fountain of youth, man. <laughs> Controlling the seen and unseen world. Elijah the Tishbite, remember Tishbite just means a wanderer. It's a demon. Elijah the dweller from among the inhabitants of Gilead. He's just a dweller, so let's go. So he comes out of nowhere, you know what I mean? You could read the story, he's, he's popping off. <laughs> he, he, he goes right at Ahab, as a why, the power of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall not 
be dew nor rain in these years, but according to my word, the word of Hawah came unto him, saying, Go thee, go thee hence, and turn you eastward, and hide yourself from the brook Kareth, that is before the Jordan, and it shall be that you shall drink of the brook. I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So he went and did according to the word of Hawah, for he went and dwelt by the brook Kareth, that is before the Jordan, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there was no rain in the land in Hawah. The word of Hawah came unto him, saying, Arise, go thee to Zarephath, which belonged to Zadon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to sustain you. Ka, ka. So Elijah's being told where to go. He's being fed by the birds. <laughs> He's being taken care of by the creator. He's going on his way. I'm just going to skip ahead. You know, you could read the story. It's a beautiful story. You know, Priest Khan. He's bringing fireballs down, jamming him up. He, he He's proven a while over these fake, fake, uh, fake priests. You know what I'm saying? Fake prophets of this Baal and all this stuff. This, this Baal's above, man. We could pick it up in 2 Kings 1. And Moab rebelled against Israel after the death of Ahab. <laughs> And Ahaziah fell down through the lattice in his upper chamber that was in Samaria and was sick. And he sent messengers and said unto them, Go inquire of Baal-zubub, the god of Ekron, whether I shall recover of this sickness. Man. So he still wants to inquire of this fake power about his sickness. And we still date. He's still dealing with the rebellious house of Moab, right? God. But an angel of Hawaii said to Elijah the Tishbite, Arise, go up to meet the messengers of the king of Samaria and say to them, It's because there is no God in Israel that you go to inquire of Beelzebub, the God of Ikran. Now therefore thus says Hawaii, Thou shalt not come down from the bed whether you are gone up or surely die. And Elijah departed, and the messengers returned unto him. And he said unto them, Why is it that you are returned? And they said unto him, There came up a man to meet us, and said unto us, Go return unto the king that sent you, and say unto him, Thus says Hawah, is it because there is no God in Israel that you send to inquire of bells above the God of Ikra. Therefore thou shalt not come down from the bed whether that are gone up or surely die. And he said unto him, to them, what manner of man was he that came up to meet you and told you these words? And they, and they answered him, he was a hairy man. And we broke this down in previous drops that they were just referring to his garments, not his physical bodily hair, but that he had garments on, you know what I'm saying? So, and girt with a girdle of leather around his loins. And he said, it is Elijah, the Tishbite. <laughs> then the king sent up unto him a captain of 50 and his 50. And he went up to him and behold, he sat at the top of the hill and he spoke to him, oh man of God, the king has said, come down. And Elijah answered and said to the captain of 50, if I be a man of Hawa, let fire come down from heaven and consume you and your 50. And there came down fire from heaven. And this repeated like over and over until they had to come at Elijah real humble. I mean, I'm just talking American. I'm just talking to Prester, the dragon. <laughs> he got fire coming down. I mean, is he commanding the dragons? Is 
is he a dragon? I mean, you know, is he a prester? We're talking to Elijah. And this prester is a meteor thrown from the clouds with such violence that by collision, it is set on fire. So the prester is the fire <laughs> thrown down from the clouds, right? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Fire from heaven consumed him in his fit. Oh, man. So after this kept repeating, <laughs> so he died according to the word of Hawa, verse 17, 2 Kings 1, and Jeroram began to reign in his stead in the second year of Jeroram, the son of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, because he had no son. Now the rest of the acts of Ahaz Ahaziah, which he did, are they not written in the chronicles of the kings of Israel? <laughs> And they had to repent, man, because they came at him that third time. Oh, man, of God, I pray you let my life and the life of these 50 servants be precious in your sight. So they had to beg him not to send another fireball at him. <laughs> Behold, verse 14, there came fire down from heaven and consumed the two former captains of 50 and their 50s. But now let my life be precious in your sight. And the angel of Hawa, this is very important. Now we're talking, this angel pops up <laughs> out of nowhere. So where did this fire come from? The angel or the dragon? Is Elijah commanding this dragon or El Hawa commanding the dragon? Because the dragon said to the angel of Hawa, said unto Elijah, go down with him, be not afraid. So he rose and went down with him unto the king. Hmm. Is it because there is no God in Israel to inquire of his word? Therefore, you shall not come down from the bed where you gone up. And it happened, right? He died, not Elijah, but the king that he was warning. According to the word of Hawa, which Elijah spoke, so Elijah kind of came for a cameo. He popped up out of nowhere, 1 Kings 17, 2 <laughs> Kings 1, his work is done. Okay, what happens in 2 Kings 2? And it came to pass when Hawa would take up Elijah by a whirlwind into heaven, that Elijah went with Elisha from Gilgal. <laughs> so now this pops off verse 15 well let's get it verse 12 Elijah saw it and he cried no let's go to verse 11 it came to pass as they still went on and he talked that behold there appeared a chariot of fire horses of fire out the sky <laughs> which parted them both asunder Elijah went up by a whirlwind into heaven. Nobody knows where Elijah came from, El Hawa. Nobody know where El Hawa went other than a whirlwind of fire, chariot of fire, and a whirlwind into heaven. Why not? Yeah. And then Elisha popped off, right? He got the garments. <laughs> he took up the mantle of Elijah, right? So just like with Moses and Joshua, Moses lays his hands on Joshua, passes that spirit, that ruah. So does Elijah pass on his power to Elisha. Because he took the mantle of Elijah that fell from him and smote the waters and said, where is Hawa, the power of Elijah? And when he also had smitten the waters, they were divided hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa. But JC over here saying, all power is given to me. He's 
turning water to wine in Matthew 20. I mean, you know, all through Matthew. <laughs> He's uh walking on water. He's walking on water. And here go Elijah. Elijah. I'm not even talking Moses and Joshua no more. But the same Elijah that in Malachi 4, a while talking about, behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of a while. We're talking end of days talk. You're reading in Hosea 3 that the children of Israel will return, will return, seek the creator directly. And David, your con, whom <laughs> Jeremiah 30 say, I will raise up unto them. I will raise him up. Malachi 4 said you're going to see Elijah before this end of days. End of days is all happening because you seeking Hawa and David coming trembling unto Hawa and his goodness in the end of days. Got you. Whom I will raise up unto them. So I just want to establish that it's not a spooky concept for a prophet to be raised up. It doesn't come from the New Testament. Elijah was just raised up in a chariot of fire. <laughs> He's supposed to return in the end of days before the great and dreadful day of Hawa. David is supposed to be risen up, raised up unto us as we seek Hawa and return and seek David the Khan in the end of days. So it doesn't have to just be about a branch and not the root of the tree. The seed can be raised up as well as the root of the tree. And if a man being, you know, brought back is crazy to you, then I guess Elijah being sent <laughs> because Malachi is the last book of the Tanakh. So second Kings, first Kings already happened, but Elijah's still coming back and he's a prophet, but the covenant is with David because I've sworn unto David, my servant, this covenant, my chosen. Yep. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil have I anointed him. There is not another anointed. <laughs> There's not some new guy in town saying all power has been given to me. David don't got to say that. He's already anointed Khan of Khans forever with whom my hands shall be established. My arms also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact from him, nor the son of wickedness afflict him. I will beat to pieces his enemies. That's how Hawa talk about David, man. Just like with Elijah. <laughs> Fireballs. This dragon is popping off. Yeah. Okay. I will set his hand also on the sea and his right hand on the river. Didn't Elijah just part the water? <laughs> Elisha part the waters with Elijah's mantle. And he shall call unto me, you are my father, my God, my power, and the rock of my salvation. Who is the salvation of David? Hawa. And I will appoint him firstborn. The highest of the kings of the earth. No, JC talking about all powers given to me in heaven and earth. Wow. So start baptizing people in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. That's crazy because uh, Elijah had the power to smote the water. Alicia, man, took that mantle 
divided it hither and thither, and Elisha went over. Is it strange for a prophet to return? And where did Elijah go? <laughs> I guess he just went up in a whirlwind, right? Chariot of fire, horses of fire. Elijah went up and the world went unto him. The Tishbite, <laughs> demon then, is a generic term for a location like Tishbe, Gilead. Don't even mean he was native there. Abraham is mentioned as a sojourner, right? So he's a Tishbite. <laughs> Let's put this together. Abraham's a Tishbite. In Genesis 23, 4, and King David and our fathers are described as sojourners in Psalms 39. I didn't bring David up. They brought David up. We're just talking Tishbites. Talking Elijah and we're talking David who is the highest of the kings of the earth. But don't tell JC who's saying that all power has been given to him. Now, nah, don't, don't tell JC. He might go cray cray. Because David is the highest of the kings of the earth. The king of kings, Rex Regnum. He combines in himself spiritual and secular authority. All power has been given to me. Stop it, Hijack. Stop it, JC. You don't have authority. You're not the kind of cons. That's Dawi. So that's why they had to, you know, hijack into the David line, the bloodline, the Holy Grail line, the frequency. Call him a son of David, but he's an immaculate conception who came from a virgin mother. How can he be the son of David? I think you're tapping into the to the Rex Ragnar, to the King of Kings, who got the spiritual authority and the earth authority. Who controls the seen and the unseen? <laughs> Highest of the kings of the earth, Psalms 89. We just talking about the chosen one, the root. Before we start talking about branches, we got to talk about the root because I will appoint him first born. Where did Elijah go? Where did Tishbite go? The sojourner. He came as a sojourner and left in the whirlwind. Is this the same frequency as Melchizedek? Is this the same frequency as the anointed Kandawi? of the Moshe flow that passed his frequency into Joshua, son of Nun? Are we talking about all the same flow? Deuteronomy 34, Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the Ruah, of wisdom. That Ruach of wisdom was popping off. Yeah. I mean, you know, we've been in that Ruach Tardy Ma a little, a little too long, man. Isaiah 29 talk about a wise poured out unto you that Ruach Tardy Ma. So this is the opposite of the Ruach that was passed from Moses to Joshua, this puts you into a deep sleep. Close your eyes. Even the heads and eyes of your seers, of your prophets, man. Hawaii has brought over you a deep sleep, has sealed your eyes, the prophets. He's covered your heads, the seers. Until when? Until when? Until you return Hosea 3 <laughs> we're putting it all directly together because you had to go directly to the creator 
to even see David. You don't go through David to get to the creator. You go through the creator to even see Yahweh, Khan of Khans. So you can see how the cold connects with the water forever. How the cold is connected through the covenant of the firstborn bond, highest of the kings of the earth. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn unto David, my servant, forever I will establish your seed. Now we could talk about the seed, but you can't, you can't skip over the root of the tree. David returning is not spookism. It's happened with Elijah. <laughs> and uh, it's prophesied in Jeremiah 30 to happen with Dawi. Our Khan whom I will raise up unto them. You want to make room for JC so all power can be hijacked? <laughs> hey, this is your Yahweh shot, but where, where's, the, uh, where's the foundation for this new power hijacking the power of David, who doesn't even come from the seed or the lawns? of that way. Let's go. Is it so weird for prophets to return? I mean, even Kitsukoado in the indigenous flow is said to return. So it's not just a, a Bible thing, Managa. It's an indigenous thing that our prophets, our priests, cons return. The Mormons are hijacking into that, but they ain't telling nobody that their Jesus Christ is the Mayan priest, King Kitsukwato. Even they don't rock with no new JC talking about all power has been given unto me. Even they ain't rocking with this. <laughs> Even they ain't rocking with this. They're rocking with the actual indigenous Khan Joshua who got those hands put on him. <laughs> Joshua, the son of Nun, was full of the spirit of wisdom for Moses had laid his hands on him. Now the Christians got the laying of the hands. Preston John got the fountain of youth, taking baths with his tribe, turning back to the age of 32. Now the Christians got baptism, a symbol of the living water in the fountain of youth. Johnny the Baptist is a symbol of Preston John and the fountain of youth where his entire tribe has taken six baths and turned back to the age of 32. We're just talking marvels and suspended animation because his eye was never dim, nor his natural force abated, lessened, decreased, never. Is it weird, man? For a prophet to return, if we talking David, are we going off? Are we going left? Or is this indigenous? Just like with Joshua or who they call Quetzalcoatl, the rainbow drag, a figure described as white and bearded. They had to make it. They had to make an indigenous priest con the rainbow dragon, a white bearded man, because they had to fit him into Jesus. Even in the New Test, it talks about feet of bronze. So how's that a white-bearded man with the feet of bronze, man? It won't even make sense in the hijack. Hijack city. So kids a quote or what? Who came from the sky and promised to return. Wow, that sounds a whole lot like the Elijah flow. Came from nowhere, disappeared in a chariot of fire, and the world went into heaven. Wow. According to the scriptural account recorded in the Book of Mormon, Jesus Christ visited the and taught natives of the America. Or Kitsukoatl <laughs> taught the indigenous Nagas a mess. He's a messenger, right? Following his resurrection 
and regarded them as the other sheep whom he had referenced during his mortal ministry. So they fitted into the timeline by saying after he was killed way back in 30 AD, 28 AD, whatever, 32, 33 AD. He then reappeared for the natives of America to teach them because they are the other sheep. The other sheep. Not that they are the children of Israel, but they are the other children outside of his children. <laughs> so, <clears throat> let me clear my throat. All right, man. So, this goes deep because now you're going to connect this with what Atlantis and spaceships and stuff. Yeah, ancient astronauts. Quetzalcoatl has a basis in fact. He claimed that the legends actually describe a race of white men. These are the only, I mean, these people, they got to put their image on everything, boss. You know how much insecurity has to be in you to paint your images everywhere? Or would it say in Maccabees that they're going to seek your books and paint their images all over and paint their likeness all over the place? They're the Atlanteans. They're the Egyptians. They're the Hebrews. And they're the race of white men connected with Quetzalcoatl and he's white too he got he's a white bearded man like Jesus white gods I mean this whole section is called white gods ain't that a shame ain't that a shame but don't white mean pure you know so all right all we need to know is that they're saying Quetzalcoatl is going to return <laughs> They say Quetzalcoatl, you know, <laughs> has an actual basis on Caucasians visiting. The, oh, man, this is ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous, man. But yeah, the Mormons believe that Quetzalcoatl or Joshua, the real Joshua, right, that got replaced with Jesus Christ, the real Joshua, right? <laughs> a figure described as a white bearded man came from the sky and promised to return. So focus on the return aspect that this indigenous priest con Joshua figure is returning. And the Mormons are connecting this Mayan priest king with JC. <laughs> Damn. So whoever is invading these indigenous people are invading Christians? Is that what you're saying? Because last time that I checked, the papal bulls say to invade the enemies of Christ. How could they be enemies of Christ if Kitsukawato is Jesus? Unless he's not there, JC. He's not their Christ. He's not their anointed. He's the anointed of the natives of America. Native of America, the Prestors. The dragons, the American copper color cons. How are they white bearded people? These people are walking blasphemy, man. <laughs> Belief in Cortez's kids are So then they played on this return narrative so much that they say they claim that they used it to trick the indigenous people that. Cortez was the actual white bearded return of Quetzalcoatl because they all thought he was white. This is how they written their way into indigenous native history. White people. America filled with white people now, right? <laughs> so since the 16th century it has been widely held that the Aztec Emperor Montezuma II initially believed that the landing of her Herman or Hernan Cortez in 1519 to be Quetzalcoatl's return. Forget the white stuff. Focus on the return. So when we say David is returning or David, you know, are we adding anything to the script or are we reading it right out this Tanakh or, you know, 
We want to switch versions. What, what does it say in the, uh, you know, we're going to play around some versions, man. But what does it say in the KJV? But they shall serve Hawa their power and David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. So even in the King James, it don't say no. The righteous branch, the righteous branch will be risen up. And you know, it's David, man. You can't ignore them speaking directly on David. Because by the time you're looking for a righteous branch, anybody can claim that. And everyone's gonna get if anybody steps up and say, I'm the righteous branch of David, our own people are gonna torment this person <laughs> to a point of oblivion. Oh yeah, nigga, you ain't shit, man. Hey, prove it, man. Let me see some fireballs, man. Just imagine the ter the turmoil that the person that stands and says, I'm the branch, the chaos that comes out of that. So we got to be talking about one con, one shepherd. One shepherd doesn't mean anybody out the house. It's one shepherd, Ezekiel 34, Ezekiel 37. Let's go. Yeah, I mean, Quetzalcoatl is returning, right? Elijah's returning, Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of Hawa. David is returning. He's being risen up. David, their king, <laughs> whom I will raise up, right? And we got Quetzalcoatl's return that they say, Hernan Cortez in 1519. He tried to act like he was Quetzalcoatl and they believed him, right? They believed him. They just believed him. They just so silly. They just believed him. This view has been questioned by ethno historians who argue that Quetzalcoatl Cortez connection is not found in any document <laughs> that was created independently of post. Conquest Spanish influence, and there is little proof of pre Hispanic belief in Quetzalcoatl's return. So, are they the Mormons, you know, putting this return flow on it, you know, based on their JC flow, or is it the other way around? Are they using utilizing something that is already established to try to validate? Their JC flow. Let's keep reading. Most documents expounding this history are of an entirely Spanish origin, such as Cortez's letters to Charles V of Spain, in which Cortez goes to real to great pains to present the native gullibility. So we're so gullible and dumb over here of the Aztecs in general as a great aid in the conquest of the Aztec Empire. And, you know, we've surfed the wave that these Aztecs, these Azteca, are these tribes following Awashua, Joshua. Then you can go into the Florentine Codex, the Bernardino, the Sahugan, you know, documentation, which, you know, I mean, it, it gives you some great, uh, you know, building blocks, man, to put this story together. But. Focus on the return of Quetzalcoatl, the return of Elijah, the return of David, before we say that anybody returning is spooky. <laughs> and then by the time you get to the new test, you got JC coming back. So where's that story coming from? Now Jesus can return, but Quetzalcoatl can't. But Quetzalcoatl is being linked to JC. But Joshua can't return. Elijah can't return. And David can't return, right? <laughs> I mean, make it make sense. And they argue that this Quetzalcoatl Cortez connection is not even found in any, any documentation which was created independently of post conquest Spanish influence. So, them trying to connect Quetzalcoatl Cortez has no foundation no documentation post conquest spanish influence or independent documentation little proof man so what are they talking about when they say that 
these Cortez letters to Charles V and look at the picture of Charles. Did he look like this? Or I uh, love to real history, WW, is this Charles? I mean, you know, Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, 1500s to 1558, on the monies with the uh, Naga here, right? <laughs> Charles V, man. And these jabronis made him look like this. Iconoclasm, they paint their images on all of history they're not the europeans they're not the romans because this is the holy roman emperor another naga invading Presta john another naga on the other side of the more and more war so cortez <laughs> is writing to black ass king charles about these copper color nagas already here, found here, boss, by the European. Yeah. Most documents expounding this theory are of entirely Spanish origin, such as Cortez's letters to Charles V of Spain, in which Cortez goes to great pains to present the native or naive gullibility of the Aztecs. So he's telling black ass King Charles, he's telling the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V that you're just some naive, gullible fools because you believe that Cortez is Quetzalcoatl returning because Quetzalcoatl is said to return. Some Mormons believe that Quetzalcoatl, a figure described as white and bearded, who came from the sky and promised to return was Jesus. <laughs> Kids of Coado is JC. But damn, that's, that's going to put JC in around 1000 AD. At the same time as the Prester's popping off, Davis popping off, you got JC. I think you need that thousand years, which is why you can't outwardly admit that Quetzalcoatl is the real Joshua. The real Joshua who Moses laid his hands on. Joshua, the son of Nun, full of the Ruach of wisdom, for Moses had laid his hands on him, man. That's the real Quetzalcoatl, parting the waters. Stopping the sun in his tracks. That's the real kids of Kowato, stopping the sun in his tracks. He ain't got to be no New Testament JC. That's called typology. And this is called iconoclasm. <laughs> Painting your images on even these hijacks. The Holy Roman Emperor. Because it's a more and more war. Kitsukwada will return. <laughs> Elijah will return. And even Joshua prophesied about David popping off. And you think that's crazy, but we found it right here in the Qumran Scrolls. I'll leave a link. The Dead Sea Scrolls has a whole section called the Prophecy of Joshua. Yeah, let's just get right into it. These are fragments. <clears throat> Shalom for the dismount my nuggets. so for behold a son is born to Jesse this is the prophecy of Joshua yeah Joshua is a prophet because Moses laid his hands on him <laughs> he has the gift he has the spirit he's full of the spirit my nuggets. yeah man so in the prophecy of Joshua Fragment number nine. We'll pick it up where, where we can. It says, for behold, a son is born to Jesse. Who's Jesse? Son of Perez. Who's Jesse? 
<laughs> Who's Kilia? Kilia, the second son of David. Kilia was one of four Israelites who died without sin. So the son of King David, Daniel, is Kilia. <laughs> he is without sin. Who else? The other being Benjamin. Right, 12 tribes, Benjamin, Jesse, Yeshai, and Amram, who is Mo Moses' father. Again, drawing a correlation between David and Moses' stories. They're both born of sinless men. I'm not talking Jesus. Nobody's talking JC. <laughs> There's four Israelites without sin before Jesus. And even David, you know, the, the jury is out whether he uh, is a murderer. We talked about that. So check it. Yes, Shai is a sinless Naga, the father of David. David is known as Ben Yashai, son of Jesse, man. So <laughs> this sinless Naga Jesse, Joshua, who Moses laid his hands on, is prophesying <laughs> that someone's going to carry this rock of Zion. For behold, a son is born to Jesse, son of Perez, son of Judah. So he's from the, he's from the seed of Judah. He is to take the rock of Zion, and from there, he is to possess the Amorites, to build a house for Hawa, the power of Israel. Gold and silver, cedars and cypress trees will be, will he bring from Lebanon to build it. And the sons of, there's a fragment off there, and David. So you could say the sons of Hawa and David. Hawa will make him dwell in security. Hawa of heaven will reside with him forever. But now the Amorites are there and the Canaanites inhabit whom I consider guilty, whom I have not sought blank, blank from you. All right, so <laughs> it's a lot of fragmenting here, man, but it's amazing that Joshua, who Moses laid his hands on, <laughs> got the wisdom and the spirit that Ruah is prophesied about King David you know taking the throne and possessing the Amorites man um, being victorious in this more and more war And there's a lot more to, uh, you know what I'm saying, this prophecy of Joshua. Children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab, right? That's where, you know, he, his body uh, or his, his eyes were never dim. <laughs> his natural force was never lessened, never removed. I mean, it's real interesting. I'm going to leave this for you, man, and. Like I said, there's a connection here between Moses and David. Even in the Qumran text, some of this, they don't even know if it came from David or Moses. It's called Apocryphon, A-P-O-C-R-Y-P-H-O-N, a Moses in parentheses, or David. Someone don't know. <laughs> it seems to be overlapping. <laughs> it seems to be overlapping, man. <laughs> How could it be? All of his servants, Og, his height was, so they're talking giants. Wasn't David fighting giants? Didn't David go up against Goliath? And then Moses is going up against a giant too. So their stories are overlapping. Half cubits, two cubits worth breath, a spear like a cedar tree. So they don't know. If it's David or Moses. <laughs> but let's continue. 
we just talking about the seeds of Jesse, <laughs> who's one of four sinless men. Before your JC is popping up saying all power's been given to me, you already got sinless nagas without transgression. David, my servant, my chosen, my firstborn, I have made a covenant forever. Will I establish your seed? Can there be branches without the root, man? And is it crazy for this root to return as you return? The children of Israel return, seek Hawa their power, and David their con. In the end of days, let's go. Amen. So, you know, I mean, look, where does this branch, you know, really pop off at? You know, is it something that the Christian church inserted to give Jesus life? Because if you say a branch, they can just insert JC, I mean, hijack city, who now wants all power, all power. Interesting, man. I mean, Going to this New Living Translation. <laughs> I just want to show you how they do this in real time. We've been reading the whole time. Hosea 3, children of Israel return, seek the creator and David, right? They're calm, calm. Nice and easy, no confusion. <laughs> the New Living Translation goes, but afterward, the people will return, devote themselves to the Lord, their God, and to David's descendant. Now, why would they put that, insert that there, man? What does that do? What does that open up? A wild goose chase for you to chase after which of David's descendants in the last days or end of days. One says end of days, one says last days. They will tremble in awe for wild his goodness, right? So how do you go from the Tanakh version saying, seek the creator and David, the king, the Khan, to seek the creator and David's descendant? You see how that works? See how they just open it up for the hijack to mosey on in talking about righteous branches, man. <laughs> So just clicking on some of these Christian, uh, this is called ChristianCourier.com. This is just proving the point here. They're talking about Hosea 3 right here. The children of Israel return to God. Both Israel and return are spiritual, not political. This is how this has to do with the church. <laughs> so this is here they go. It's all about the church now, right? Not a millennial reign from Palestine. The king will be, quote, David, i.e. David C, right? Back to the descendant talk. And if it is, cool. No one, you know, as long as we are saved by Hawa, I'm not complaining. <laughs> Whether it's David personally or his C descendant, I'm not complaining. What I am doing is saying, check your intention in your heart bone if you have to try to you know, really ride this narrative to make David some obsolete figure that you can now be a branch and forget about the rule. And it's not weird for David to return if Elijah's returning and gets caught, gets a coward who's returning. And we're reading Jeremiah 30, whom I will raise up again. Descendants are now taking over, right? <laughs> Descendants are now taking over, huh? So when they start talking descendant talk and righteous branch talk, you got to check their frequency because 99.99% of the time, they're trying to make room for a new hero in their romance. They want to fall in love with a new guy, a new God, a new savior, a Yahweh Shai, a Jesus who is God, right? Wrong, man. Blasphemy, man. Only Hawaii is Hawaii. Only Hawaii is our savior. 
They're trying to make room for a whole new doctrine by putting this dissenting in the same way they made room for a whole new con. Now they're just American. I'm an American. I love being American. Red, white, and blue. I thought C-A-N was can or con. How did it get to can? How do you call this American when it's C-A-N, man? It's con. And you are descendants hijacking the throne. And they want to put descendants in there for David the con. They want to turn it into a descendant thing. They want to turn it into David C, the Messiah, and turn that into JC, right? Yeah. It's just what the Christians like to do. What they say here? <laughs> Wikipedia, I just Wikipedia, Hosea 3, verse 5. Now they got it right here. Afterwards, shall the children of Israel return, seek the creator, their power, and David, their king. And they shall fear before it say they shall come trembling to the creator, right? And his goodness in the latter days. We got end of days, last days, and latter days, all referring to you choosing up, seeking the creator, KTC, and David, your con. Now it says David, their king, this cannot refer to David himself because he was long dead. Whoa. You're just going to make David obsolete? Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. I mean, even JC talk about... Uh, <laughs> Elijah popping off in the end of days. And there's a lot of breadcrumbs all over the place when you really got eyes to see clearly. I mean, what does this hijack say in Matthew 11? Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not written a greater, risen a greater than John the Baptist. So, he put Johnny the Baptist or Prester John or Kandawi above all <laughs> born of any woman. Notwithstanding that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent taking it by force. For all the prophets in the law prophesied unto Prester John, King of Kings, Rex the Goose. And if you will receive it, this is Elias or Elijah, which was for to come. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Con, con. So you are giving a breadcrumb, uh, JC, that Elijah is John, is the Preston. Would that also be David? The frequency, the flow, the flow of Dawi that has a forever covenant, that Ruach. Is that reflected in this same Elijah that is returning? And again, <laughs> if Elijah's returning before the great and terrible day, then why couldn't David return as well? Or is this David? Is this a prophecy of Dawi that they want to turn into a prophecy about JC? Is it strange for a man to return? If you're talking to prophets, is it strange for a man to return if you're talking about the chosen, the firstborn, forever shepherd? Is that some indoctrination or 
will we serve the creator and David our king whom I will raise up unto them when in the latter days right Elijah the prophet is going to come and he's going to turn the heart of the father to the children and the heart of the children to their father Elijah is El Hawa messenger Mashiach Mashiachs are sent you don't have to make David obsolete we don't have to make no room for no one else even the righteous branch represents the root there's no separation they wanted to separate us from us nah holy roman Nah, Charles, this is the European, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Charles over here hijacking everything. Charles is hijacking everything. A panel from the painting in the Larco Museum in Peru depicting the Inca emperors. This panel shows the last seven Inca emperors and the subsequent first European emperor of the Inca, Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, a black man, is the first European emperor of the Inca. Why would this black man be the first European? Because these are the Europeans that found you here, my Nagi. <laughs> and they look just like you. Hijacking the ink. And look how they tried to, you know, color these people out and iconoclast their images on them. But you see they're all melanated. All these Spaniards are melanated. All these Portuguese are melanated. Just like Charles E. Boy who's the first European, first European, first European emperor found here by the Europeans. And Cortez is writing letters to who? Charles E. Boy. Such as Cortez's letters to Charles V. Who? Charles V. Charles V hijacking the Naga. Moses or David, man, I mean, Joshua prophesied that the seed of Jesse is gonna be the rock of Zion. Build a house for Hawaii, the power of Israel, gold and silver popping off. We're talking Yeshai, one of the four ancient Israelites who died without sin, who has David, a perfect man, has a perfect Naga. Amram has a perfect Naga Moses. <laughs> Let's go. So, you know. They say it can't be David because he's long dead. Well, so is JC, but he's supposed to come back. So is Kitsakwado, but he's supposed to come back, right? So is Moshe, but for some reason, <laughs> some reason his natural force was never abated, nor was his eye ever dim. So why would David's eyes be dim? Why would David's natural force be lessened in any way in any way if the covenant is with Dawi forever all generations forever will I establish your seed hey, Lawa. hey this is crazy man I, I tried to you know, because they always talk about this Psalms 110, and we talked about it, you know, many of the times in the past as well. Just digging on, you know, even this wiki flow, 
Hosea 3 for the dismount. He said, oh, it can't be David. He was long dead, so it must be referring to the son of David, back to the descendant talk. But they're just trying to make room for JC, and this is what the intention is when people are doubting that David personally <laughs> is also returning. It's crazy, right? You know, no one wants to believe that the creator has this power, right? The son of David, right? Okay. So now you're talking what? Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> All power has been given to me now, right? <laughs> Hijack city. I would set up one shepherd over them. That's, that's, that's Jesus too. So now Ezekiel's prophesying about JC. So all this is about JC to them. <laughs> Even though it says one shepherd, David, David, you know, <laughs> shall feed them. They want to make that JC. Even though it says, even my servant, David, he shall feed them, right? We're talking Ezekiel 34. And he shall be their shepherd. And I, Hawa, will be their power. My servant David, a prince among them. And they talking about no righteous branch. That's Ezekiel 34, verse 23. Whom would be a witness, leader, commander to the people, as here 55, someone who was to be raised up to David. Jeremiah 23, verse 5, a righteous branch. So again, did they add this branch? so that they can talk descendant talk to us? Or are we just, you know, going, you know, even, you know, into the, you know, clearer perspective that at the end of the day, it is about the, the seed that continues, right? But the seed can't continue without the appointing of the shepherd. We don't know how to get the water without that way. It's not just a righteous branch that has to drop on the fountain of youth. <laughs> Con David, the tribe got the, got the drop. This seed is forever. So David represents the covenant of the entire house of Israel, man. Who was to be called the Lord of righteousness, David's Lord. Now, see, this is when we say, stop it. Stop it, boss. Because they want us to, you know, think that Psalms 110 is just talking about uh, David calling uh, Jesus Lord. David's calling Jesus Lord, right? This is what they want. I mean, this is what the Christianites want, man. We talked about it, man. Even our Hebrew brothers and sisters will even try to use this to validate J.C. The Lord said unto my Lord. So the creator said unto my Lord Jesus is how they want us to interpret this. <laughs> this is what they want us to interpret. Psalms 110. The Lord said to my Lord means, oh, David is calling Jesus Lord. <laughs> Sit at my right hand, yada, yada, yada. Or is the creator telling David, hey, sit at my right hand while I make your enemies your, foot, your footstool, man. He just said, I'm going to, what is it say in uh, Psalms 89? I will beat to pieces his adversaries before him and smite them that hate him. Who? David, my servant. I will make your enemies your footstool, man. But no, that got to be J's. That got to be JC now, right? Lord said unto my Lord, see, David is saying that the creator said unto my Lord, uh, Jesus. Blasphemy, man, blasphemy. What does it say, man? I couldn't even find us on Google no more, man, which is just crazy. I mean, it's clear that they are deleting so much off of Google right now. I had to go to Yandex. And I barely ever do this, but. I had to go to yandex.com and put in Targum Psalms PDF because I couldn't find this particular copy anywhere in Google. So they are erasing us, and this is why our Press the Packs and 
eat the packs and all the drop we've been dropping you know everything you got save it man save your time capsules man because they are they are deleting us they're deleting our investigation they're painting their images on us now you know instead of david looking like this <laughs> now they want david to look like this or excuse me <laughs> instead of charles hijack charles looking like that and you know what they do with king david don't even let me let me put in king david because you know no more do we see that we you know it's gonna be some hijack right so went to the yandex so instead of uh, the lord said it to my lord what does it say again in the targum right go go click on it what does it say in the targum flow the aramaic flow because they they want us to believe in real time that david is calling jesus lord that the creator said unto my lord jesus what does it actually say <laughs> composed by david a song the lord said in his decree to make me lord of all israel but he said to me wait still for saul of the tribe of benjamin to die for one reign must not encroach on another and afterwards, I will make your enemies a prop for your feet. Nah, boss, I thought it just said the Lord said unto my Lord. All that I just read got summed up into the Lord said unto my Lord in these translations. So that they can fit in the descendant talk. So that they can say, See, David's calling Jesus Lord. Is that what it is? That the vibe you get it when we read Psalms one ten in the Targum, man? Nah, he said, "Wait still for Saul of the tribe of Benjamin to die, because one rain can't approach upon another, can encroach on another rain." He ain't saying, "My Lord said to my Lord Jesus." Nah, man. he's saying. Hawah said in his decree to make me Lord of all Israel, not JC, not Mr. All Power has been given to me. And afterwards, I will make your enemies a prop for your feet. Same thing we reading here. In Psalms 89, I will beat to pieces his adversaries before him. I will smite them that hate him. I will make your enemies a prop for your feet. Your football. Hawa spoke by his decree to give me the dominion in exchange for sitting in study of Torah. Wait at my right hand until I make your enemies a prop for your feet. Wait for Saul of the tribe of Benjamin to pass away from the world, and afterwards you will inherit the kingship, and I will make your enemies a prop. For your feet, I will beat your enemies in pieces, man. And my faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. We're talking Dawi. So nowhere in Psalms 110 does it talk, JC. The Lord, your Lord said to my Lord and all this stuff, man. <laughs> nowhere, man. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit at your right hand. He's talking about JC. The Targum makes it real clear. He's only talking Dawi being the head and not the tail. He's telling him to wait for the reign of Saul to pass by so that David will be Khan at the right hand of Hawa. If David's at the right hand, where's JC? That's why he's saying all power has been given to me. He don't got no power. He need he ain't even at the right hand. <laughs> he don't got no ama. So by the time you get to, you know, Jeremiah 23, we're talking about descendants. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's get it from right here. Yeah, man, for the dismount. Let's back it up, back it up. 
verse 5, Behold, the days come, says a while, that I will raise unto David a righteous shoot, and he, he, he shall reign as king. Now, you can read it a couple ways. You, you might have been brainwashed and trained to read it like, uh, behold, the days come, says a while, that I will raise unto David a righteous shoot or branch. And this branch and this shoot shall reign as king. <laughs> but it don't say this branch is going to raise it, reign as king. It don't say the righteous shoot will raise it, reign as king. The righteous shoot is sprouting. We're talking about sprouting. Let's go to the lexicon. I will raise a righteous branch, a sprout from Tazmach, T-S-A-M-A-C-K, Strong's Concordance 6779, to sprout or spring up. So we just said Israel will return. See, Kawa, Israel will return. Psalms 89, talking about the covenant with Dawi forever. How long will you hide yourself a while? How long will your wrath burn like fire? Where are your former mercies a while, which you did swear unto David and your faithfulness? Remember a while the taunt of your servants. How I do bear in my bosom the taunt of so many people wherewith your enemies have taunted Hawa. Wherewith they have taunted the footsteps of your anointed. They're doing that by saying, nah, David can't return. It just must be the branch. But my naga, even if we're talking about the branch, you're still just talking about the springing up of what? The seed of who? Who's the covenant with? So if you're talking the seed of Dawi in all generations, then this sprouting has everything to do with the same Ruach and the same frequency that Hawa made a covenant with. So if you're sprouting up, Let's go back. Jeremiah 23, verse 5. Behold, the days come, says the Lord, I will raise up unto David a righteous shoot or branch, a springing up unto David. And he or David shall reign as king. So you can say in your mind, oh, well, the righteous branch is going to reign as king. That's what they want you to think. Or you can say, I will raise unto David a righteous branch. So David now has a branch. David now has a, a righteous springing up. He needs an army. David needs an army. David needs the children of Israel to return. To seek the creator directly, KTC, MHOE. Then start seeking David to come, right? Why are you seeking David and not the righteous branch? <laughs> if you want to activate the branch, you got to activate the root. First, you got to return. And when you return, that's when you are shooting up. That's when you are sprouting, my nigga, to sprout growth. We're just talking growth. So Hawa is promising David a righteous shoot, a righteous spring, a spring of water. A tribe, a shepherd needs a tribe to shepherd, right? So this righteous shoot is being raised up unto David. I'm just reprogramming my nuggets. So they don't have to go off on the doctrines when they put shoots and branches to now intersect and replace the root with the shoot. The shoot can't replace the root. Got to get the boot. 
Give the hijack the boot to try to replace the root with the shoot. Nah, man. Nah, man. You adjust your mind, but when you read it as what? As this, I will raise up unto David. I'm going to give David. I'm going to raise up unto my Naga David a righteous spring, a righteous spring, a righteous growth, a growth of Nagas so he can be a shepherd. I'm going to give him some Nagas to shepherd. I'm going to give him the righteous. All generations, I will establish your seed. This is the righteous shoot. This doesn't mean that you now take over the king, the Khan. Because <laughs> you went a long, a long time without a Khan. Israel been solitary many days without a king, without a prince, without a sacrifice, without pillar, without effort, terrible. All your priestly things. But afterward, here comes the shoot. Here comes the spring for the dismount, my naga. Here comes the growth. Are you growing? Have you grown throughout these years, my naga? Are you sprouting up like a rose out the concrete? I'm just talking to pocket tech. If I'm talking to pocket tech, my naga, I'm talking you. I'm talking pocket tech, man. Tupac. Rose out the concrete. I'm talking the con out the concrete being hijacked. <laughs> Oh, by the first subsequent European. Nah, man, I mean, it says to seek Hawaii and David. They changed it to seek Hawaii and David's descendants. <laughs> Therefore, they can put a narrative of this shoot being replacing the root and this sprouting and this growth is you returning and you returning unto Hawa and Hawa is raising unto David the righteous shoot and David shall reign as king not the shoot my naga that's not order but David can't come back <laughs> why not Elijah's coming back before the coming and the great dreadful day of Hawaii. Kitsukawado is promised to return. And David, whom I will raise up unto them, is popping off. So, Johnny the Baptist is popping off. Everybody's popping off. I will raise unto David a righteous branch or shoot or growth of Nagas as a wall of protection. A shepherd needs a flock, my Naga. That's the righteous shoot. The flock doesn't replace the root and start to reign as Khan of Khan. He is still referring to David. Read it all together now. Behold the days come, say, saith Hawa. Behold, the days come, says Hawa, the creator, that I will raise unto David a righteous shoot, and he, David, shall reign as king. Because now he has the righteous shoot. He got the righteous flock. He got the seed. The seed. I have sworn unto David, my servant, my chosen. David, forever will I establish your seed, your flock. So as promised, your flock, your seed, your righteous shoot has been raised unto David in the end of days. And he, <laughs> David, shall reign as king and prosper and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord of our righteousness. 
Some say uh, the Prince of Salam or Shalom. But a, a shoot is a sprout. <laughs> you sprouting out the concrete. You are growing out the concrete. We're talking about the growth. And look how they say uh, where it says Lord. That's why we say we, we dodge saying all these lords because these lords <laughs> have been replaced from the Yahweh back to the Strong's 3068, which is connected with the 1961 from Hava. <laughs> Hava connects directly with the Heya. And here, they even cut it off short. They don't give you all the definition, <laughs> but they're letting you know you're getting close, right? Hawa. Hawa, Hawa. We know those V's and W's are interchangeable. Look how they did it in the Hebrew. Aleph, Bat, Gam, Da, Hawa. They turned the Wa, W A W, into a Vav. V-A-V, -V. body bag for the illusion, for the dismount. So when they say Hava with a V, it came from the W, my naga. Hava is Hawa. Hawa said to arise, stand up, when I will raise up for David. Unto David means for David, a righteous shoot or a righteous sprouting growth of Nagas, a flock to shepherd, because a shepherd needs a flock, which they are transliterating as branch, so that you can think of it as one man coming out the tree who's now uh, all power's been given to me, hijack city but there's only one kind of cons and there's only one king of kings with spiritual authority and secular authority <laughs> only beneath heaven. But now we're just talking to Preston. Who, oh, who is Preston Chai? We're talking the seed of Hawa who walked through the door. David is the shepherd that guide you through the door time and time again man so you can get to that towel before they put jesus on the cross it was the last letter it is the last letter of the hebrew they put a man on the cross to hijack the cross with these cross sticks is the oldest indigenous symbol in <laughs> in the natural native indigenous flow my knock is two cross sticks meaning the mark, the sign, the signal. They wanted to signal JC. It signals completion. Your completion is you coming together. Ezekiel 37, two cross sticks, right? Take one stick for Joseph, one stick for Judah, put them together. Hey, for the dismount, man, we out of here, man. <laughs> and again, you put in Jeremiah 23, righteous branch. Here come the Christians. <laughs> oh, the righteous branch of David. Jeremiah's prophecy of the branch, right? They want to make all this about their JC. Christian Corey, right? They want to go right to Christ. So when people start talking, ain't, ain't we supposed to be looking for the branch? They mean, ain't we supposed to be following Jesus? <laughs> And we know Jeremiah 33 also talks about this branch, right? Go oh, where we at? Oh, yeah, verse 15, in those days, at that time, will I cause a shoot of righteousness to grow up unto David. So David now gets his flock, my nugget. That don't mean that the shoot replaces the root. You need to get the boot. <laughs> will I cause, will the creator cause 
a sprouting, a growth of righteousness to grow up unto David. Dawee. And he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. They want to make this into another person coming from the tree of David, but it just means a growth of righteousness, right? A growth of righteousness. Shoot, branch, growth, my naga. Growth. <laughs> oh, man, we having too much fun growing together, man. And David, beloved one, chosen one, son of Jesse, right? From the same as Do, D O D. And then we talk about them Dodies, huh? With that Rabadi Gadi Mani flow, this Dodi title, right? So it's just the same as Dod, Dodi, <laughs> beloved. So the Dodi title refers to a beloved title. We know that. That we is beloved, man. Surfing away with you, because I know you surfing away with me. Ezekiel 37 for the dis dismount. <laughs> and my servant David shall be king, verse 24, over them. Not the right, not the branch, but the branch or the shoot or the growth is being given to David as a flock. The shepherd needs a flock. So the righteous shoot must be given and, you know, presented to Dawi at the right time, man. Eh? The shoot of righteousness has to grow up unto David. The growth of righteousness has to grow up unto David. Not to replace David, man. But because David needs the shoot, needs the flock, needs you to return. The children of Israel returning is the righteous shoot. And you can only be righteous if you're seeking the creator, M-H-O-E, most high over everything. You're keeping the code, KTC. Now you can rock with David because you're in code. Now that makes you a righteous shoot. <laughs> it makes you a dog, a beloved one. A sprouting one, a growing one, a sprout, a growth. Jeremiah 33, right? Verse 15. In those days and at that time, what the end of days, latter days, I will cause a shoot, a growth of righteousness to grow up unto Dawi. And he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land, man. And Judah shall be saved. Yeah, man, we back. There ain't no doubt about it. My servant David shall be king over them. Yeah, David's returning. <laughs> and they all shall have one shepherd, not two, not three, not four, not five. Not Jesus, not the son of David, <laughs> not the righteous branch of David now taking over the shepherd. All power's been given to me. No, no. Fall back, JC. One shepherd. My servant David shall be king, and they shall have one shepherd. Afterward, the children of Israel shall return and seek the creator and David their king. But they shall serve Hawa their power and David their king whom I will raise unto them. And my servant David shall be king over them, and they shall have one shepherd, not two, not three, not four, not five. If Elijah's returning, David's returning. If Kitsukawado's returning, Dawid's returning. If Johnny the Baptist is returning, Preston John is returning. <laughs> and they shall all walk in my ordinances and observe my statutes and do them. And they shall dwell in the land, my naga. Ain't you ready to dwell in the land? And I ain't talking about no uh, Tishbite. I ain't talking about no Sojourner. 
I'm talking about being a native again, man. A native of America. To be a true copper color con right here at home. To take your priesthood back. To be the con again. To be the con again means you got one shepherd, my nigga. Not two, not three, not four, not five. We're not searching for the righteous branch. We're searching for David. You are the righteous branch. You have returned. You are the shoot. <laughs> you are the growth. And you are the flock. And David is the shepherd. One, one shepherd. And they shall dwell in the land that I gave unto Jacob, my servant, where your fathers dwelt. Your mamas dwell, and your children gonna dwell, and they shall dwell therein, they and their children, and their children's children forever. And David shall be their prince forever. Not the shoot. <laughs> you are the shoot, and David is your con forever. Huh? David, my servant, shall be their con forever. Their prince, their king, their con. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. Why? Because the covenant is already with Dawi, my chosen. I have sworn unto David, my servant, forever. I will establish your seed, your shoot, your growth. They wanted to be a new Messiah. All power's been given to me. I'm saying you got to hit the towel and get the root of the tree. The growth, the sprout, the shoot, the branch is you returning to Hawa. Now you got the David flow. And now you got salvation through Hawa. Because Hawa is our only savior. So we got mighty generations. We got David forever as the first born, highest of the kings of the earth. All power's been given to me. Stop it, JC. Out the back door. You can't replace the shoot. <laughs> and you can't replace the root. They want to replace both the shoot and the root. They want to turn the shoot into spiritual Israel. The Christians want to replace the shoot. The Muslims want to replace the shoot. <laughs> but there's only one flock. They want to replace the king of kings with their hijacked presidents and vice presidents. But there's only one kind of con. There's only one Rex and the goose, man. Yeah, man. The kingdom of the press is where they go to be legit, man. We're talking the house of the con that they turn into Vatican. The great Khan is the Khan father. Who, oh, who is Preston John? One shepherd, my naga. One shepherd. I will establish them. I will multiply them. I will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forever, my naga. One shoot, one root, together. My dwelling place also shall be over them and I will be their power and they shall be my people, my naga, forever. That's the point. Don't matter if it's coming uh, as a descendant of David or David. The point is that you become a wise people again, that you back in code and the nation shall know that I am a wise that sanctify Asherah. What my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them for ever. That's the point. Don't get it twisted. But please know that one day you're going to serve the creator and you're going to remember David, your king, whom the creator will raise up unto you. Because you now are in code. You now have returned. You seek Hawa and you seek David, your kind. You come trembling, man. You come humble because you got put in a Ruach Tardy, ma. And you just waking up, popping off with this 
Tribe of Music. Shout out to Five Eyes, my my sugar, what it do, my sugar. <laughs> we keeping the flow going for the cons, man. Hey, who oh who is Preston John? Has his natural force ever been abated? Has his eyes ever been dim? Or is he still in suspended <laughs> animation, man? <laughs> hey, now we know. Hey, the Preston's here, man. Preston John is King David. And King David is Elijah. <laughs> El Hawa, who disappeared in a swarming of fire, chariots of fire, <laughs> and uh, came out of nowhere, man. <laughs> From nowhere, man. Just a wanderer. Hey, it's a lot we are putting together in real time as we continue to investigate and get the drop. Managas, we have returned. So we seek Hawa. We seek our creator forever. And we seek Dawi, the firstborn bond. Because we seek the covenant. And for our seed, for our root, for our shoot to be established for ever, my naga, and never lose it again, never go solitary again many days. But to know that David is our prince forever, that we have returned, that we seek our creator, and we will always seek that we are king. <laughs> and we ain't replacing the root with the shoot, because that's out of order, boss. Ain't the water for flowing with us, man. Now that we got clarity, Let's keep popping off. Let's go cities of gold. Let's keep popping off, man. Let's get back in our Cold Keeper series and keep establishing this book in the hands of Dawi. And just keep uh, surfing the wave. <laughs> He's surfing the wave with me. I'm surfing the wave with you. The water drop nation. The root continues and the seed is forever. Allah. Allah. <laughs>